Another Korean-based MMO is heading to the west, and though Black Desert Online shares similarities with Davillion, I'm considerably more optimistic about where Pearl Abyss is taking this ambitious MMO. Let's get the obvious out the way. Black Desert Online is absolutely gorgeous. It's astounding and outstanding. Everything looks good, and it's well optimized. I made the mistake of running through the world at the highest setting, suffering with 25 frames per second, but I hardly noticed because everything that blurred by was gorgeous. I run an i5 3750K, 8GB of RAM, 660Ti, and on their slightly high setting, the game runs at a near flawless 50 frames per second. One of my biggest problems with Davillion was the combination of apathetic missions and boring combat, but Black Desert Online's combat is exciting. It's pleasing kinetically and visually. I chose the Tamer. I love her acrobatic style. She flips, slices and dices, and is a combo machine. I sliced and diced the same way for hours before realizing I had more ways to cut enemies down through the skill tree, but kept forgetting the combinations. It wasn't the fault of the game, it just speaks to the amount of combinations available. Just switching between left mouse click and right mouse click is 8 moves. Add directional keys with the spacebar or another key the game designates and you could easily have 20 plus ways to chop your foes. It is important to use the full variety of moves because some attacks allow you to evade and others give you space between you and your enemy. Otherwise, you could cut baddies up the same way but you will likely drink more potions. You get a generous amount of them, but enemies will give you a reason to pop a flask. Black Desert Online has a ton of quests, but like Davillion, it's hard to stay attentive to the story. The foundations of the plot are poorly established, so quests quickly become insignificant errands, though the combat makes these errands exciting. It doesn't help that localization fumbles in another Korean MMO. Some characters say things that make you cringe, and you want to say to that character, we don't talk like that. However, thanks to contextual cutscenes that introduce characters, I get that much more invested. But character development seems to stop there. You could do a ton of things in this world. You could do MMO staples such as participate with guilds, engage in PvP, craft, and cook. But you can also fish, tame wild animals, and turn them into mounts, create things with alchemy, buy and decorate homes, auction goods, garden, among a variety of other things. The question is, if you just wanted to tailor your experience around taming animals, for example, would it be worthwhile? Answering that question is difficult because many of the tutorials were turned off. They could be hard to understand without guidance. Taming horses should be as simple as catching a Pokemon, but it takes four or five steps to create a mount. Even if you do receive a mount through activities, you have to reach a stable first before you can ride it. You can't just summon it. Everything has an extra step where you might think it's just plug and play. It's the reason why consoles haven't died, and it's the reason why some people might be put off by the complexity of accomplishing what should be simple tasks. To be fair, everything in the final version might be sufficiently explained and easy to understand, even if it were to require some effort, but as of now, that's not the case. Where you might lose at least one hour of your time is character creation. The game isn't finished, and this might be the best character creation ever. You can sculpt the body, the face, and hair. You can place tattoos on the body and add reflection to the skin and change the color of pretty much anything, though that is limited to preset colors for whatever reason. The only thing you can't do is design your own clothes. Otherwise, I had to force myself to stop fooling with all the options so I could start the game. Unfortunately, though not surprisingly, characters are gender locked and ethnicity locked. Never the end of the world in my eyes, but I always find it difficult to name female characters and I am a fan of options, but it doesn't hurt the experience. One thing that surprised me is how easy it was to use the mouse and keyboard. I am an unashamed gamepad user and in a game with this much action, I typically default to a gamepad. But I thoroughly enjoyed tapping the keys and clicking the mouse, I had no problem not using the gamepad. There's so much to like about Black Desert Online including the fact that Pearl Abyss is taking the pay to own approach in the west. It likely won't trump any major MMOs on the market but there is plenty to be excited about. I am concerned about all of the content and how meaningful it will be, but with a ton of quests, engaging content, and beautiful, well-optimized graphics, you got to keep an eye on this game. Don't forget to subscribe to the Game Watcher YouTube channel, like on Facebook, and follow on Twitter.